Good morning, Bridge family. It is great to be in worship with you this morning as we gather here in this space to worship. One announcement before we get to a great discovery announcement is that GLOW, we hope that you have seen in the eConnect all of the details and the full schedule of all that is to come. This is Wednesday, August 18th, about 4.45 to 7. Come when you get off work. There will be dinner in here in Chitwood ready for you when you get here. There will be opportunities for people of all ages. There will be, apparently last week when I said that there's a video game truck for kids, that was all that some kids got out of church the entire day, according to some of their moms that night. So there's a video game truck for kids. There is a glow-in-the-dark laser tag upstairs for the youth. There will be, th- there will be a homemade ice cream competition for adults mm-hmm. that is led by our Wednesday night small group leaders. So it's a chance for you to go and meet and talk to some of the small group leaders Put a face to a name, get signed up and ready to go for a small group for yourself for the for the fall as well. And so all of this happens August 18th. We hope that you already have this date in your calendar and you have the full schedule in the eConnect. If you need the eConnect, if you do not receive our weekly email, please let us know. We would love to make sure that you get on that list so you can know everything that is up and coming and be involved in all of that. So Discovery is two weeks from today, and we are so excited. And so helping us lead worship this morning are some of our friends who will be leading worship for Discovery. And so we're so glad that they are here and with us this morning. And so as we prepare for Discovery, we want to remind you to please be in prayer for all of our leaders, for all of the middle schoolers who are signed up as we prepare for this. Well, good morning, Bridge family. On a beautiful Sunday, I cannot wait for you to see some of the talent that you have right here in this church. They're here to help lead us today. So let's stand together and worship and lift our voices as Dalton and M.A. and Mark lead us this morning. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. darkness falls it won't prevail cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph my God will never fail oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle
gonna see a victory. Every good 
your glory, God. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Amen. Church, will you pray with me? Father, we gather humbly this morning in your house. We are grateful for the opportunity to lift our voices corporately together, God. I am so grateful for these young adults that are on stage with me. Lord, we, we are grateful for their heart to lead. We are grateful for the talents that you have bestowed upon them. And God, I want to specifically pray right now for discovery. God, their junior high is hard enough. And we know this past year has not been easy. So God, whatever obstacles these students have had to overcome to get to this place. I pray that the instant they set foot in this building, they feel you. God, I pray for these leaders. God, give them strength to sustain during the week. God, give them your peace that surpasses all understanding so they'll know exactly what to say when you ping the heart of one of these students and their life is forever changed. God, we are grateful for the opportunity to get to minister to these students. Let it be all that they want it to be. God, do what you do. Show up, show out, and change people forever so that when they leave here, they go home on fire for you. God, we pray for everything that you have done, and we will stand on faith for everything you will continue to do. God, be present in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Can we give this team a round of applause? Let me tell you something. I am so proud. They have such talent. And if this is what our church, where our church is headed, then y'all, we are in good hands. I am very thankful for them and their heart to lead and their talent. We are very blessed as a church to have them. We are now going to dismiss our kids. First kids in the sun. Where are you at? Boys and girls, right here in the front. I see you, buddy. <laughs> they have some fun activities planned. Hello, good morning. We are excited to see you and hear the hustle and bustle of little feet. We also want to come in our time of tithes and offerings. Now, this applies to everybody that is here that you call First Church your home. If you want to give in person, you can do that this morning. There's a basket at the kitchen door, the 8th Street door, and the courtyard door. If you want to give the old-fashioned way, feel free to do that. The address is on the screen. You can also do text to give. Uh, we have our website, fumct.org forward slash give, or you can give on Venmo. Just make sure that you choose the business tab at FUMCT. Now, if you are visiting, we want you to do nothing. We want you to let us love on you, welcome you into this space, and thank you for coming to worship us in this house this morning. We're so grateful that you're here. We're going to give you a few seconds to do that, and then this team is going to share a feature with you that I think will really touch your hearts.
So this morning, Bridge family, we are talking about a text that we actually just talked about and worked through several weeks ago in, in a series earlier when we, dealt, when we dealt with doubt and questions. But this morning, we're looking at a different part of that story. And so here is the scene. It is the two, two of the disciples walking. And as they are walking back to Emmaus, it is Resurrection Day. It is nearing the end of Resurrection Day. And they are walking those seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And as they walk, they are trying to sort through and figure out what all has happened in their life. So they're questioning and they're wondering and they're doubting everything and they're heartbroken of how can this have happened? How can we have had to watch our leader, this person that we trusted and we believed in and we really thought that he was the one? How can we have to watch as he was tortured and killed. And then how is it that people are saying that he's not there? How is it that the tomb is empty? Where has he gone? What has happened? And they're trying to work through this and figure it all out. And in their heartbreak and in their pain, a stranger joins them on the journey and begins to participate in the conversation and ask questions for himself and answer questions even. And they're just trying to figure it all out. In a moment when probably much of nothing made sense in their lives, the one thing that they knew that they were supposed to do, the one thing that they knew that they had learned from their leader who was the best example ever for compassion and kindness and love and hospitality was that they would invite him in. And so here's our text this morning. About this time, they were nearing their destination. Jesus keeps walking ahead as if he has no plans to stop there. But they convinced him to join them. The two disciples said to him, please, please be our guest. It's getting late and soon it will be too dark to walk. So he accompanies them into their home. When they sit down at the table for dinner... He takes the bread, the ordinary bread at the table that would always be at the table, and he takes it in his hands, he gives thanks for it, and then he breaks it and he hands it to them. At that instant, two things happen simultaneously. Their eyes are suddenly opened so they recognize him and he vanishes, just disappears before their eyes. The two disciples said to each other, amazing, weren't our hearts on fire within us while he was talking to us on the road? Didn't you feel it all coming clear as he explained the meaning of the Hebrew scriptures? So immediately they got up. They didn't stay where they were. They didn't enjoy the moment and try to piece it together, just the two of them. Immediately they got up. And in the dark, most likely for most of that walk, they rushed back to Jerusalem all seven miles where they find the eleven gathered together still in the same place where they left them. The eleven plus a number of others. Before Cleopas and his companion can tell their story, the others have their own story to tell. They said, the Lord is risen indeed, it is true. He appeared to Simon. Then the two men report on their own experience, their conversation along the road, their moment of realization and recognition as he broke the bread. At that very instant, as they were still telling the story, Jesus is there, standing among them. My friends, today we come to the table. Today we break bread together. Today we share in this holy meal, a meal that we have, can you believe that we have been back in person for a year now? And in this whole year that we have been back in person in the six months solely online leading up to that, here in this service in the bridge, we have only had communion together once and it was on Christmas Eve, which is so incredibly unlike me, but personally, I'll just take the blame for all of this because I have struggled with how we can come together in a safe and meaningful way and break bread. Because for me, there's just something to be said about that loaf and about coming together and breaking bread off of the same loaf and sharing in that together. And those little cups and the little styrofoam wafers just don't cut it for me. I know for some people they love them and they're great, but for me it just doesn't cut it. 
And so I've been procrastinating and putting this off because I just want us to come together and realize the significance and the opportunity that we have in breaking bread together. And I think that if we just do it because we know that's what we're supposed to do and we don't take the time to understand why it is that we're having communion and why it is that we're breaking bread, that we lose all of the significance and it's a missed opportunity. So today, conveniently, we are a week in between series. So last week we finished up the GLOW series. Next week we launch into God at the box office. And so this week, the first Sunday of the month, is a, it is in between these series. And so we are taking this opportunity to talk about communion and to experience communion together. Because here's the thing. In that moment... The two disciples have been on this long journey. They're exhausted, I'm sure, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually drained. And they invited that stranger in, even amidst their mess of a life at that moment. And that stranger took bread and gave thanks. I'm sure giving thanks for the opportunity, giving thanks that those people didn't just send him out on his way, giving thanks for all of the things But it is in that moment when he, Jesus, gives thanks and breaks the bread that suddenly they realized that though they were heartbroken, though their lives were a mess, though so much had been going on in their life, Jesus was with them through that whole journey. Though everything was different in their life, Jesus was still there. And Jesus had been there all along, sharing in that heartbreak, sharing in the struggle, sharing in the doubt, sharing in the fear, sharing in all of the mess of their lives. See, the understanding of of communion and why we break bread together is something that has long been debated in all of Christianity. And every different denomination has its own understanding of why we break bread and what the significance is behind it. And so if we just take two, for example, we have... And on one side, we have Catholics who believe that this is your big word that you can leave church with today, transubstantiationism. And so we believe that the body, the bread, and the wine literally become, they change substances, become the body and the blood of Christ when the priest prays over them. On the other side, we have our Baptist friends. Anyone? Many, several, I mean, for real, who believe that it is a remembrance, a beautiful and joyful remembrance of Jesus' sacrificial love for us. And so we all have different understandings and we all come into this space probably bringing with us those different understandings of what communion is and why we break bread together and what it means and all of those different things meshed into one. And so as United Methodist, John Wesley who was Anglican, Episcopal, if here in the U.S., Anglican believed in the importance of communion. For him, it was such a spiritual discipline that he would often have communion four to five times a week. But for him, he just said, you know what? This is one of those things that we can't quite understand. We don't know how, we don't know why, But we believe and we trust that Jesus' very real presence is here with us when we break bread. That just as those two disciples experienced that day in their home when Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and their eyes were opened and they were made aware that Jesus was really with them in that moment and had been with them all that, that time, that such is true for us. That when we come together in community and we break bread, that then our eyes are opened as well to Jesus' very real presence with us. So maybe it's a cop-out, but as Methodists, we call it a holy mystery. We don't really understand it. We can't really comprehend it. We can't really put it into words, but we trust and we believe that our eyes are open to Jesus' very real presence with us as we break bread as well. And so the disciples filled with all of their heartbreak, filled with all of their struggle, filled with the messiness of their life, are made whole as they experience the very real presence of Jesus in their midst. Early on in my first appointment, I began to notice that on the first Sunday of every month, there were these people that 
a, a good, huge group of them, actually, who were very regular. You could count on them every week except for the first Sunday of the month. And so I began doing some questioning and, and trying to pry into why that was happening and why they weren't here on the first Sunday. And for some, they just said they didn't really understand communion and didn't really see a significance in it, and so it was just kind of a waste of time and would skip that Sunday. One person was like, you know, I just don't feel worthy. I feel like I need to get my life straight. I need to figure out what's going on with my life. I need to get in a better place. I need to get out of this messiness of life before I can break bread, before I am worthy to come to the table. But you see, that's the thing about communion. That as we look at that Emmaus story, those two disciples' lives were most certainly not put together in that moment. When they came around the table, their lives were a hot mess filled with all of the brokenness and all of the fear and all of the doubt and all of the heartbreak. And there they sat at the table with a stranger and their eyes were opened, realizing that Jesus' very real presence was with them and had been with them all along. And it was in that moment, it was in the moment of the breaking of the bread that their lives were forever changed. They didn't have to have everything figured out beforehand. They didn't have to have everything great and wonderful before they came to break bread. Their lives were a mess when they did, and it was there that Jesus met them in the middle of the mess of their lives. And so it is with us. We bring humbly all of our brokenness, all of our disappointments, all of our doubts, all of our grief, all of our pain, all of that brokenness to the table And we humbly come and meet Jesus at the table, the one who heals, the one who forgives, the one who sets our lives straight once again. And we allow Jesus to meet us there. In things as simple and as ordinary as bread and juice. If we were in traditions today over in the sanctuary, we would participate in a historic liturgy. And the liturgy has many different parts to it. There's a part for giving thanks. There's a part for remembering Jesus' life, a part for remembering the Last Supper and the moment that Jesus gathered around the table with his disciples. And there are all these different parts, and they can really be changed in terms of the words based on what's going on and why we're having communion, except for one part. Here's your second fun fact of this service. It's called the words of institution. And so in these words of institution, the pastor prays, make these, these ordinary things that are bread and juice, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Make these ordinary things of bread and juice become for us us here in this space, us individually, each one of us, the body and the blood of Christ. But there's a so that, so that we, the followers of Jesus, the believers of Jesus, the body of Christ here and now might actually be the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by his blood. See, we gather here in this space where Jesus meets us as we break bread boldly praying that our eyes might be opened in the way that the disciples' eyes were opened, that Jesus will meet us here in things as ordinary as bread and juice. To say to us, look, I see your heartbreak, I see your grief, I see your struggle, I see your doubt, I see that's all that's going on in your life, and I am here with you, and I have been with you all along, and I will continue to be with you all along. And we allow Jesus to meet us in our brokenness to meet us in our joys, to meet us in the messiness of life and say, I see you. I have always seen you. Do you see me? Do you see me in these things? Do you see me here with you through this journey? Because I've always been here. But there's a reason why we have this encounter. There's a reason why we've received this grace into our lives. And it's so that we can go out into the world so that we can be an extension of that grace and the brokenness of our world. And so today we're going to share in communion in a different way. We're going to share together. It's not forced. It's not a thing you have to do. It's a thing that you are urged and you're welcome to do. The late Rachel Held Evans once said, Jesus makes the invitation list, not us. 
See, Jesus is the host of this table, urging all to come and to feast. Come, taste, and see that the Lord is good. It's not anything that you have to do. If you're not ready, that's totally fine. We'll walk through and explain how we will do this together today. But first, let's prepare ourselves to come to the table. Let's prepare ourselves to meet Jesus here. Let's prepare ourselves to allow our eyes and our hearts to be open to Jesus' very real presence here in our midst. And so as we pray, I'm going to pause and allow a moment for you to pray to yourself, for you to pray out loud if that's what you would like to do. For us gathered here in this space to lift aloud or in our hearts the prayers of our lives as we come to the table. So let us pray. God of grace, God of mercy, God of love, God of healing and forgiveness, God, we know that sometimes we do not do our best at following you. We know that sometimes we make mistakes, sometimes we fall flat on our faces, and God, we give you thanks for your grace and your forgiveness. So God, we confess our sins to you this day, and we pray that you... Fill us with the assurance that we indeed have been forgiven and that you love us just as much in this moment as you always have and as you always will. And so, God, we take a moment and we each pause and we pray for our world and we pray for all those who are hurting and we pray for our country and we pray for our community and we pray for those in our family and our friends and, God, we even pray for ourselves. So in this very moment, may our prayers fill this space whether they're spoken aloud or said in our hearts, God, we know that to you it is a beautiful noise of all of those prayers being lifted to you. So Holy Spirit, God of love, God of grace, we pray to you in this moment. Hear our prayer. God, hear our prayer this day. We humbly pray. Amen. And so before Jesus suffered and died, he took a moment and he paused and he gathered his closest friends around a table. And he took the bread, the common loaf from the table, and he held it up and he gave thanks and he blessed it and he broke it and he said, take, eat. This, this is my body and it's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink of it in remembrance of me. And so we, the followers of Christ here today, we give thanks for Jesus' life and for his ministry, for the ways that he showed us how to love and how to heal and how to forgive and how to reach out to those who are hurting and broken. We give thanks that he was willing to be tortured and to suffer and to die. And we especially give thanks that that wasn't the end of the story. But we give thanks for his resurrection and the opportunity that we have to be here in this space way that we are able to live because he is alive today. And so we give thanks for Jesus. We give thanks for the meal. We give thanks for the gift of grace. We give thanks for Jesus' very real presence here among us. Let's pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the earth until you come in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, my sisters and brothers, the table is set. Here's how we're going to do this today. 
Our band is going to come forward, and we are going to demonstrate this for you. Now, here's the thing. It's probably going to get a little messy. Someone's going to forget words. I mean, who knows? Someone might drop something. It'll be okay. It's okay, all right? Like, we are sharing in this gift of grace together, and sometimes grace is messy. And so as you, once we direct you, once we demonstrate for you and then direct you, we invite you to get together with your family, get together with friends. If you are here by yourself and you do not feel comfortable, COVID stinks. If you don't feel comfortable getting together with others, but you would still like to be served, if you just raise your hand, one of us will come with hand sanitizer and we will serve you from a fresh loaf and a fresh juice as well, where you are. So one package of juice and one package of bread for each group together and take turns. If you are being served, we receive with our hands out and open humbly and vulnerably ready to receive. My friends, there's a difference between taking and receiving. We take something that we have earned and this is not a meal that we have earned. And so we humbly and we vulnerably open our hands and receive the gift of grace. So then if we are the ones serving, you take a piece of bread and you break it and you look someone in their eyes and you say, this is the body of Christ and it's broken for you, my sister, my brother. The words will be on the screen the whole time. So if you need to read them, go for it. And with the juice, this is the blood of Christ poured out for you. You take that bread and you can dip it in the juice and eat it. You know, this is your your family group, your friends, it might be your cup. And so if you prefer to just drink from the cup, then do that too. As we gather here in this space, as we share in the bread and the juice, the body and blood of Christ, may we, our eyes, be open to Jesus' very real presence with us in this journey. If you are finished, will you stand with us? song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other Jesus, the only one who could ever see, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my
My friends, you are singing, you are pouring out your heart to our Lord and Savior here in this space. And may that be our prayer going forward. May we indeed build our lives in such a way that our faith comes first and we are an extension of all the grace and the love and the forgiveness and the healing and the mercy that we ourselves have received so freely. May we be an extension of that to everyone that we come in contact with throughout the week. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.